ever since last night, people have been having family meetings. So <laughs> let's uh, welcome in two of our brothers from another, Torre and Dr. Jason Johnson. Uh, Michael, I think we just go, we, you know, we're going to obviously get in where we fit in on this, but I think yeah, you yeah, agree. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Torre, you go ahead and kick us off, and, and Jason, you respond after Torre. We go, we go sit back and listen. You know, I think we're we're going um, to hang up and listen. <laughs> I think a, a billion dollars of economic productivity has been lost in America today because everybody <laughs> wants to talk about this, and it's all anybody wants to talk about. You know, look, the, I don't believe that just because you call it a joke, you get to say whatever you want. I am in favor of tremendous latitude for comedians and the history of black comedy in particular has been saying things that even activists were afraid to say and thus pushing notions forward. But there's nothing revolutionary about saying something about a specific woman's physical appearance and saying that she's bald and making fun of her being bald. You know, a lot of people have started to say, the conversation's sort of evolving, right? A lot of people started to say, well, Ricky Gervais says all kinds of crazy stuff oh, when he does the Globes. He does. And he's brilliantly surgical with the way that he talks about you Hollywood scumbags are worthless individuals. But show me where he has said, hey, Tina Fey, you're getting fat again. Hey, Nicole Kidman, you look like you're bulimic. Hey, your hair has been lost. And I can only imagine how much pain has gone on inside the Smith household around Jada losing her hair like this. And for Chris Rock to thoughtlessly drudge that up with a specific attack on a specific woman, you know, it's kind of gross. You know, the joke right before that was about Javier Bardem toward the husband. You better not outshine your wife tonight because you need to maintain respect with par with your wife. And then he turns to Jada and he's like, you ain't got no hair. That's kind of, that was whack. That was really whack. And it was low. And I'm sure that for Jada and Will, they also go back into what happened in 2016, right? When April Rain and others and Will and Jada were talking about Oscars so white and Chris Rock took uh, took sides basically with white people in the academy saying, Will, and say, Jada, you wouldn't have been invited to this anyway. She's married to one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. She could sit in the front row of the Oscars anytime she wants. Um, you know, it was, it, it was a totally unacceptable quip at Jada's expense. And I, you know, the pain that she's going through dealing with this alopecia, losing her hair. She's been known for a very long time, going back to a different world, as one of the more beautiful act, black actresses, actresses, period, in America. And I'm sure this is painful for her. And, you know, you can say Will overreacted. I can't say that I would have done something different. You can make jokes about me all day long and I'm gonna take it. Cause Regina Hall earlier in the show made a joke about y'all got an open marriage. Will, why don't you come up here and let's talk about that. That's about Will, right? Like you could joke about me, but a joke about my wife and her body, my mama, my kids. Now you've gone too far. And like, you know, I'm, I, I, I can't, I can't roll with that. And I noticed too, Chris Rock of all people made a documentary called Good Hair, which was extraordinary, which he made because of his daughter's feelings about their hair as they were coming into being teenagers. So yeah. he's intimately aware of black yep. women's hair issues. And even still, he thought it was okay to make fun of a black woman not having hair in front of the entire yep. world. I, I, it, Doc, look, Doc, Doc Johnson, get in there. I'm gonna just say this, I'm gonna say this. Everybody can sing and dance and perform however they want in order to justify what was performative toxic masculinity, period. It was wrong, it was bad. Recent reports that just came out within the last hour, Chris Rock didn't even know 
that Jada Pinkett Smith was suffering from alopecia. I didn't know she was suffering from alopecia. Okay, so we, we can't necessarily impugn his intent. You can say it was a bad joke. You can say it was offensive. It was rude. I have no problem with saying anything like that. But let's be honest. You, I don't care if you're a comedian. I don't care if you're working as an airline stewardess. I don't care if you're working at CBS. I don't care if you're working at Starbucks. People have a right to perform their jobs and not worry about physical violence. Chris Rock did not deserve to be attacked. He did not deserve to be slapped. Will Smith could have done dozens of other things if he really wanted to show how offended or upset that he was. And what I saw was a man engaging in toxic, and what do I mean by toxic masculinity in case people get confused about this? Toxic masculinity tells you as a man that your pride, your image is so fragile that anything rubbing up against it, right, damages it. Any slight, somebody cuts you off on the road, you gotta chase them to the next gas station, cuss them out. Somebody looks at your girlfriend in a particular way, you gotta pull a gun off. Somebody bumps in front of you at the grocery store, you gotta punch him. Toxic masculinity says that violence is the proper and consistent response to all men on any perceived slight one way or another. And that is what we saw. It is not good. It is not healthy. It is not cute. It is not justified. And the same energy, the same place that what Will Smith did, that same energy is what leads to men being abusive to women. Okay, this idea that, hey, I, I was disrespected, it comes from the same toxic place. Had Will Smith gotten on stage and grabbed the microphone and said, you know what, Chris, maybe when you figure out how a marriage works, you'll have a white blood. He could have done some stuff. Ooh, he could have gone like up there like and, and criticized. Yeah, he could have said, hey, when you have a wife that you've been able to work it out with for 30 years, if you're up here ever getting one of these awards, maybe you can say something. Until then, X, Y, and Z. There were plenty of things that Will Smith could have done to express defense of his wife. What I saw was someone defending their ego. I don't think either of them are terrible people. I think, you know, obviously Will Smith had a particularly bad day, but what I don't think is healthy and what I don't think is good is all these people out there saying, yes, this is defense and everything else like that. No, this is not good. And I'll add this because I think this is really good by contrast. Just last week, I was on with Holly. We were talking about this. Just last week, we were talking about Cory Booker standing up as a black man for Judge Jackson and talking about how great that was and how important it is in our community that we see African-American men standing up for black women, okay? Some of the same voices praising him are now online saying, we never see people coming for defensive. No, no, there is a way that you can defend people who've been I mean, insulted. I didn't want Cory Booker to run up and punch Mitch McConnell in the face. That would not have been no, a good no, thing. I mean, but you know, it's I'm interesting. And, and, and you know, Jason is a real friend of mine. We've hung out. We talked about this a little bit last night. Um, and I, I agree with like 99% of what you said and still add it up differently than you. I don't think that it matters that Rock didn't know she has alopecia. Mm -hmm. A joke that is specifically based on a woman's physical, a specific woman's physical appearance is probably wrong, is dangerous, is probably going to rub people the wrong way. And you notice in the room, the room was definitely not like, yay, good joke. The room was like, whoa, that joke was not cool. Um, but, but, I but think that, that, that mean physical violence I think that, is a fair response. I, well, let me get to that. Let me get to that. Because I think that um, we must deal with in this, Will Smith is one of the most entitled people in the world. And he does this, he's definitely defending his ego and his wife's ego. And he absolutely does this uh, slapping rock, fully knowing that I will be fine. I can get away with this. The Academy has made their statement that this is wrong. They're going to launch their little investigation. Nothing will happen. Will Smith will be in the front row of the Oscars next year. He will still be getting movie bookings. There's about 10 men in that room who could get away with that. De Niro, Brad Pitt, these sort of high level, super A-list people, right. right? And Will Smith knows I can do that. Right, and that's part of what he's expressing in that moment. You can't talk to me that way, right? Like, I am a made man in this town. You can't say that to me. Timothy Chalamet, you're not there yet. You might get arrested. You might be barred from the Oscars next year. Will Smith, 
can get away with that. Now, you brought up an interesting Corey who we both love, but there's another Corey I want to talk about, right? Because this notion that violence is always wrong, I don't know about that, right? There's Corey Pujols in Tampa, right? The manager of a Dunkin' Donuts, right? An old man who we later found out was a repeated child molester, a child pornographer, went into the Dunkin' Donuts and called Corey the N-word. And Corey right. said, say it again. And Cor and he did. And Corey punched him in the face. Now that old man fell, hit his head, and died. And even the prosecutor said, you know what? Corey should not go to jail for this. Send him home. And he has been sent home. He had a little house arrest. He's got a little probation. But if he's cool, but, he's going to be fine but, and but, through but, with this in a year or so, even though in another jurisdiction they might have said that's manslaughter. Because 99% of the time, 99% of the time, violence is the wrong thing. But, but, but you call right, me but, the N-word, you attack but, my wife, we're not, there's your 1%. Just, it's on. We're not just talking about violence, though. What we're talking about is calculated violence. What we're talking about is a flex because my ego has been bruised. I tweeted this out. I'm sure you guys have seen the tweet. I don't think Will Smith does that if it was a white comedian. I don't think Will Smith totally does that. I have a serious problem with that. I totally I disagree, with that. and I don't and appreciate that point because it, 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 put, that it, it totally it, disagree it, that because it, it totally I, otherizes I, our wait, behavior. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, what, what hold on, Tore, hold on, Tore, hold on, Tore. Yeah, finish, Jason, is, and Tore, you respond. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah, so first off, I don't think he necessarily does that. I don't think he does it if it's Dave Chappelle, because Dave probably would have hit him back. I don't think he does it if it's 50 Cent, because 50 Cent probably wouldn't play. And it's not like 50 wouldn't say stuff like that. What I'm saying is you can't make the argument that this is a, a moment of overcome passion and concern and love for your loved one, regardless sure. of the circumstances, without also calculating that's a long walk from your seat it was. all the way up right. on stage. He had a lot of things Jason? that he could have thought about. Yes. Jason, can you pause? Okay, it's already you were saying what well, I because I have an issue too, and I think we share it. What was your issue with Jason's point that Will Smith would not have done that to a white comedian? Yeah, I don't I mean, I don't see any evidence that he wouldn't have done that to a white person. I also think a white person probably wouldn't be repeatedly attacking Jada from the stage. Their frame of reference would be entirely different. They probably wouldn't be thinking about her at all. This is, again, the second time that Chris Rock has attacked Jada verbally from the Oscar stage. Um, I, I don't see any reason, and I don't really even appreciate the notion that others have made, but I don't appreciate the notion, oh, Chris Rock wouldn't have done it to a, to a white man, as if, uh, excuse me, that Will Smith wouldn't have done it, as if, as if it Will makes it seem like he's, like he's white afraid of white people on some like higher plane, Correct. like, oh, we Correct. can't touch Massa. Of well, course well, he would. Other, other, you know, the it's interesting, because it 50 in particular. The other part of it is, Torre, the other part ahead. of it is we don't, we, that's a hypothetical that we haven't seen. What we do know right. is that Chris Rock made a joke about a black woman's hair. And secondly, I'll contend that if a white man would have said that, he'd have known that he ran the risk of getting the shit slapped out of him. Go ahead, Michael. Oh, okay. I, I, you know, look, Terrain, come on. I, I, I have a problem with this. You keep using the word attack. And I need you to set the terms for me. We're talking about comedy. So I know Dave Chappelle doing sketch comedy joked about slavery. Uh, you know, Richard Pryor, Dick Gregory, like all of these groundbreaking comedians in their time throughout history have made jokes about things that were, were, were in some circles the third rail. So are we supposed to not joke about wives? Or do we not joke about hair? Do we not joke about body types? Yes, that kind of this defeats is not the complicated. point of comedy that kind of pushes this, it. This is not complicated. complicated. There, it. There's no revolutionary notion in saying something specifically dissing Jada Pinkett Smith for having a medical problem, right? Like jokes about slavery, about other big ideas, about white people can have a revolutionary impact, right? Even what Chappelle is doing and trying to work out how he feels about trans people in general is different than a specific attack on a specific person. And you'll note in Chappelle's last uh, uh, stand-up special, 
that, that caused a lot of controversy. The specific trans person he talks about, he lifts up and he talks about how he loved that individual and he welcomed that person into his circle. Now, whether or not that's true is a different, but that's what he said on stage, right? This is, I can't recall Gervais, Pryor, the other folks you talk about, specifically attacking a woman's physical, a specific woman's physical appearance from the stage and using the power of the microphone yeah. to do that, that, that hey. is completely over the line. Hey, but, so Ray, I think it's, I think it's fitting that we give the last word we can, cause we could do this all day. We have been doing it all day. The last <laughs> word to the host of a word with Dr. Jason Johnson. Close us out, Jason. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. When I mean that he doesn't do this to a white comedian, what I'm saying is, he was thinking about the consequences. We all know the difference between when you step to different kinds of people. Will Smith has been a famous, successful person for 30 years. There have been hundreds of people from paparazzi to regular folks who have probably tried to goad him into a viral moment, but he ain't gonna do it because he knows that if he slapped some regular person walking out of CBS, it would be a huge well, loss and it would time. damage his career. Real, sorry yeah, to interrupt. Yeah, there was that one time where he kind of, where he kind of, wasn't there like a, somebody asked him a question or hugged yeah, him but, on a red but, carpet yeah, and he smacked kissed somebody? Him. Oh, okay, kissed. it was that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So, that. like, that's, right. again, yeah. like, like if someone's trying to get into my physical face, heck, if Chris yeah. Rock had been okay. standing in front of Jada, I would have had a completely different opinion. But what I think is right. important for us to all remember is this, and also, I'll, I'll say this also quickly, I don't think that Chris Rock would not have made this statement about a white woman. If, if, if Scarlett Johansson was sitting next to Colin Jones and didn't have yeah. any hair on, and Chris Rock didn't know that she had a medical condition, and he said, hey, she went from Black Widow to G.I. Jane 2, I'm sure he'd have made that joke. And if Colin Jones right. Try and get on that stage. They just stopped. He it. made a joke. But honest, he made but, just but, but say, honestly, he made the joke about the white woman because who who was in GI Jane? Who was in GI yeah. Jane? He said GI Jane too. So who was in GI Jane? Demi Moore. White woman. But, okay, I think. But, but, but we all. Know, but we all. She didn't have alopecia. I got it. She didn't have alopecia. No, it ain't, it ain't alop. No, it's that's not what I was about to say. What I was <laughs> about. I'm not addressing. I'm not addressing it to you. I'm just saying in general. Yeah. No. Right. But that. Slow down, playboy. Slow down. What I was about to say was, we all know the painful and complicated history of black women with their hair. So even right. if Chris Rock had made the same joke to a white woman, it, it would have been differently. It, it this was an incredible it conversation. It was everything we hoped it would be. Thank you two for blessing the show. By the way, Oscar's viewership of 56% to 15.4 million. But that's after terrible. Last year's but that's terrible. But 15 million is terrible since for this 1970. show. Still the second lowest since 1970. Yeah, this this is terrible. And it hurt Will Packer too, man. There's a lot of people. That's the sad part, man. There's a lot of people whose nights were affected by this. I I, I don't. None of this makes me I happy. Could, I, I couldn't feel sleep sad for last everybody. night. I yeah. could y'all sleep last. I could I, I could. I was restless. I nah, couldn't man, really sleep like, last it's, night. It's like legit. It's legitimately upsetting. And I've had conversations with people on multiple no one no one wins in this and that's like i said i wanted to say this is a closing thing nobody this wins when the family feuds <laughs> yeah it's like this this is a time for us to show grace to everybody this is a time to bless your group chat and this is a time to don't tweet nothing that's gonna get you fired i don't think there's a black person alive in america right now who saw last night and feels good it is triggering for men it is yeah. triggering for women it's triggering for kids let's try and have some grace and some peace and 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 have real discussions on this i appreciate this guys we love y'all. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, peace. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.